It's New Bird Thursday! Woo! I see you're back to pointing. I am, because I've, I've found a better way to do it. <laughs> that was gonna say and to and I've been working my triceps. Bam! Exactly. Oh. Burning the fat, bitches. This is actually the fifth time we've done that, so he can <laughs> do like the reps. fat bitches. <laughs> That's right. This depends where you put the comma. That is a comma <laughs> statement, exactly, <laughs> yes. I am not burning fat bitches. I love all of you. Um, I would never burn any of you. I am a fat bitch. Um, well, you're my fat bitch. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, that was um, cool. yeah, that was that was interesting. So what I, I feel very dirty right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, Don't be jealous, Matt. You're a skinny bitch. Yeah, you are a skinny bitch. You're One not, would say not, that maybe he doesn't work. You're not his in skinny the dichotomy. Bitch, I am his fat bitch, and you're not his skinny bitch. <laughs> anyway, this is already yeah. diverged into yeah. unknown territory. Yeah, it really is. Uh, so we're going to be in Wisconsin today. Um, no flies. No, no flies in Wisconsin. Um, although thought, there are a lot of cow farms there. I think I thought Bells was in Michigan. Yeah, but we're drinking the Bells in Wisconsin. <laughs> Weren't you paying attention Somebody to the pre-show discussion? Up. Oh. Yeah. No, I wasn't. Yeah, well, we're in uh, Wisconsin. Yeah, oh. they're in Comstock, Michigan. Because there's a dude in Wisconsin who owes me beer. You know who you are. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Just and admit, so just admit, we're in the area. Just admit mm -hmm. you, messed, you switched the M with the W. Yeah, it happens in the Midwest. The M I for W I. Yeah, it does happen in the Midwest. Yeah, switch that. Flip, flip a little bit. Well, okay. To all my Wisconsin people, except for the guy that owes me the beer, you know who you are. Um, you guys have such awesome beer that I would assume this beer comes from Wisconsin, but it does actually come from Michigan. There you go. Um, Bell's is an amazing brewery. We've done uh, we did a Hop Slam on the show. We've done mm -hmm. the Expedition Shout on Master Pairings, but Two Hearted is by and large. The Midwestern pale ale that's like so prolific out there that, that it's like what everybody drinks. Yeah, it's, it's 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 like if you're in the Midwest and you want hops, you go to Two Hearted. Actually, right. I think um, was it Brad who mentioned it when we had the. Um, I'm not sure if it was when Brad Chimaluski. Yeah, when yeah, we were yeah. when um, we were on from Hopcast. the Hopcast. Shout out. Shout out. Um, but uh, yeah, so he, he mentioned that as like if they want like you know a hoppy right, beer right. out there, then right. that's hoppy the whole yeah. hop slam discussion on how it's like more of a well balanced right mm -hmm. beer. Um, yeah. and it's and there he was like, well, too hard is like really hoppy and good. Yeah, yeah. And if you're wondering why haven't we opened these beers yet and started drinking them, it's because we don't have a bottle opener. Yes, on we the do, table. Matt. There's one on the thing right behind you, buddy. No. <laughs> bam! Yeah. I'm gonna use Matt's phone. Wait, oh, it's already cracked. It's gonna like, you already, bam! You already knew it was cracked. What, are you gonna, what, what, what would you accomplish by hitting it with the phone? <laughs> Making myself happy because Matt was sad. I gotta say, you're really fluid with that cool case you got on your <laughs> Works pretty well. Thank yeah, you. I'm, I'm impressed. All right. Well done. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for, you know, never being without a bottle opener. <laughs> this beer's uh, smelling pretty good. Mm-hmm. Kind of citrusy, -ish. very citrusy. Um, Grapefruity. Uh, full disclosure: I did order a six pack of these, and these are the only three that are left. I did save three of them for the show, though. Cool. Where'd you uh, order it from, if you don't mind? Um, well, I'm courting them as a sponsor. Ah. So I don't really want to give them any free advertising well, at this not? point. But Wasn't if like you're watching, France44.com. France check them out. They're cool. Um, they they provide us on the West Coast with good Midwestern beer. Ooh, this was bottled on May 2nd. Yeah. Nice. So Word. it's pretty fresh. So they, uh... I, f I imagine they're churning this out so often, though, that it's it's probably kind of hard to find not fresh versions of it. Well, eh, yeah. You, I've seen things with people with Pliny. Maybe it's a joke, maybe it's not, but they're like, oh, if it's over three weeks old... It's, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, like... Assault my taste buds with it. I mean, yeah. Pliny's good. Um, Even after those guys are beer douches. Don't be a beer douche. But that's uh, not cool. No Pliny. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I've ever really had this beer, to be honest with you. I actually had not. When I bought this and I got the six pack and I checked into it, it was like I'd never had it before. Yeah. And uh, I'm really excited about this beer. This it's, is delicious. It's really yeah, good. It's, really it's an nice. amazing pale ale. It's just very, very drinkable, very, very delicious beer. The nose on it is uh, really good. Like, I, I said citrusy and up front, but it's like a. It's got a bit of a piney backbone. I was gonna say that's, citrusy, that's, yeah, piney, yeah. and like a like a nice uh, sweet, malty thing right. happening too. Yeah, you know? that makes it kind of unique. You know. Yep. Yep. So I mean, yeah, I mean, this is kind of like just a good standard like IPA. I mean, seven percent. It's pretty. It hits all the right notes for sure. Is it an IPA? It is, it an, is IPA. an IPA. Yes. I've been calling it a pale ale. Yeah, I think the the one other beer that um, I think I, its drinkability is what confused me. 
Yeah, it, th that's the thing. It's like you don't. It, you it don't... does not feel like a seven percent beer. No, it doesn't. And the thing is, is that the, the, it doesn't have like the bitterness that you would find exactly. out here. You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't bite like a lot of West Coast IPAs do. You know, so right. It's, and I'm a huge hophead, and I love I love those biting West Coast style IPAs. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the same time, I really cherish beers like this, where it's like I can still get my hop fix mm -hmm. with without it being like okay, and now I need a sour. It's not or stressful. Something else. You know? Yeah, I mean, it's not beers like Pliny, stressing it's, the palate. It's, it's not fatiguing. Um, yeah. Even a lot of the beers that Julian does at Beechwood, mm -hmm. um, they're all excellent, excellent like pale ales or hoppy pale ales or IPAs. But after a certain point, you're just like, I've had it, I can't do this anymore. Right. It's just too much. Bring me a Torvarish. Yeah. So I'm now I'm going to I'm going to respond to a comment that we received on our blog from Anonymous. I will not call you out for not even I didn't read your this name. Uh, comment. Uh, no, I haven't I, I forgot to approve it. I need to approve it. So <laughs> oh. um, but it'll be up there by the time the show's on. Anyway, um, he indicated that he was very upset that we continue to pour out bottle conditioned beers all the way. And while I understand your argument, your your complaint about okay, that. Okay, so what what show is in, in uh, the Tilkin Goose? Did we? I think I think it was the actually, I, did. I, think I the, do. The comment was on the Castellane show. Was it on the Castellane? I think it was okay. on the Castellane show, but it was like you guys do this all the time or whatever. Right, okay, it was okay. like a, an overall complaint. And here's my thing. So like, wait, wait, wait. So in reference to the fact that we pour them all the way out and we get the yeast in the glass. Right, you so. get the sediment, the yeast, and whatever. Okay, well. And, just before you say what you're going to say, mm -hmm. I'm not a big fan of doing that. And to be right. honest with you, if I know a beer is bottle conditioned... Which is why, if you've noticed, I have never done that to John. No. I've never poured a bottle out that way to John. And if you did, I'd be like, what are you doing? Right. But I personally like the yeast shot. I think it gives it a different body feel. I think it gives it a different flavor profile. It adds to the beer, in my opinion. I don't have a problem with the floaties. It like I don't mind having the yeast shot. In fact, I've drank the yeast shot on its own from people that are like, oh, all that's left is yeast shot. I'm like, hit me with it. And I don't mind it. I think it I think it adds something unique to the beer. It's definitely worth trying and I don't mind tossing it into my beer when I'm drinking it. Right. Well so that's... while I understand your complaint, and I'm sorry if it bothers you, it is kind of a personal preference thing. It's I... not something that is like, this is a rule. You cannot pour bottle conditioned beers out completely. I wouldn't do it with homebrew. Yeah, well it it really depends, I think, because it's it's one of those things that you don't want to like if you're pouring out like glasses for everyone, you don't want to be like, here's some for you. You don't want to you, assume for you, and then right. you shot for you because then you know right. this it's not one a person. Or a yeah, this person's right. getting a completely different experience. But I mean, if it's like you and one other person, you're pouring beers or whatever. First of all, if you pour a glass, pour a glass, and there's still half a bottle left, that yeast is now in suspension. You know, I mean, you right. have to pour yeah, out the. Exactly. You pretty much have to pour out the. Well, it depends. I mean, some beers will have much stickier you sediment. Know, yeast, sediment, but like a lot of times, you know, it'll get rustled up just by putting the bottle down. Sometimes do I, you know? I've, I've had bottle conditioned beers where you think it's carbonated in the bottle, right? Mm -hmm. And therefore there would be sediment at the bottom of the bottle. Right. I've had some that are, they specifically say bottle conditioned and there's nothing at the bottom. Right, well, that, and, and that, a sure lot of that why. has to do with the clarification, I think, of the beer. Um, well, it's, and well, it's not like I shook it up before I poured it. And the it. type of yeast. I think a less flocculent yeast is going to leave a lot less sediment and whatnot. Well, I, it really has to do with how particular the breweries are about how, what kind of yeast or how much yeast they add um, to the beer after it's done fermenting. Like Sierra Nevada, for example, they'll... Um, have their finished beer, they'll filter all of the yeast out and then they'll um, add back a very specific amount of yeast Just to carbonate. for carbonation for purposes, right. um, to... Which isn't going to leave a lot of shit at the bottom. Yeah, exactly. Ma mainly because they know exactly how much they need to add to carbonate and to leave as little sediment as right. possible. So, I mean, you know, different breweries have different... So, uh, you're, point, you're saying being, um, it, it depends on the beer drinker. Right. The point being for me personally is that I don't mind that, and that's why I do it sometimes on the show. And, and I'm sorry if it bothers you, and I know that's probably not what you want to do, but I don't personally mind that little extra added flavor bonus. Yeah. To but it's the also beer. kind of a learning thing for everyone that's watching. If you don't know what bottle conditioned beers are, they're fermented in the bottle, mm -hmm. right. and you will have sediment at the bottom. Right. Nine times out of and ten. And if you're pouring for other people, yeah, don't assume that they want that. Yeah. And try hard not to give it oh, to yeah, them. Oh, yeah, it's a total turnoff. Yeah. Especially. No, really. Pouring pouring beer for other people is a lot like having sex. No, no, no. There's a lot of rules that you've got to learn. No, like, you're, you know? I'm just it saying, takes a gentle hand. I, 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 one Sometimes that comes they to, don't want it all over their face. One that comes to... <laughs> 
Can I talk now? <laughs> One beer that comes to mind was uh, Mickler's Thousand IBU. Okay. I believe it was Thousand IBU. It could have been a different Mickler, but it was a a Mickler beer. It was a hoppy beer. Right. Shh, John Stock. And so um, this was really like early in New Brew Thursday for me. Right. But it was a probably a twelve ounce bottle, and I poured the whole thing into something like this. Right. And it was like thick. Yeah. And just shit floating everywhere. I'm like, oh God, I didn't even read the bottle. Right. Of course. <laughs> I didn't look, yeah. yeah. I yeah. screwed up. And so it just ruined the experience of the beer for yeah. me. I'm not yeah. saying it was, a, I can't say it was a good or a bad beer because in my head it was like, this is uh, kind of gross. Right. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. just early on I had those. Look at the bottle. Yeah, early on I had those experiences too, but then um, it was, I think it was actually Bill that taught me to appreciate the East shot. Mm. Um, you know, because that's that was something that he was. I, right. You know, well, I think he's kind of into that as well. So, anyway, the reason I bring this up is we do get comments and feedback, whatever, and we appreciate that. We want to keep them coming, and so I thought it'd be kind of cool to start maybe addressing a few of those on the show occasionally. Yeah, so. yeah. If you have something to say, then like let us know. Say you know, it. Want to hear? You Speak know, feedback. Your mind. Just. So the, the, not the on moral YouTube. of this <laughs> story is we know what bottle conditioned beers are and we know what's at the bottom of the bottle. <laughs> right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. We, we, are, we understand what we're doing, we're choosing to do it that yeah. way. Anyway, yeah. so Bell's Two Hearted Ale, uh, two thumbs up or six thumbs up or whatever. Um, we you guys do amazing that. stuff. Yeah, um, I agree. That's it. I wish it, like I, I said, could drink this all the time. Yeah, I mean, I would yeah. love to have this just in a store down the street because, like you said, I mean, it's 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 very very drinkable. For I honestly uh, feel like I would have had a, a very different view of the Midwest had I spent the ten years that I spent there in this time period versus the time period that I spent there. Yeah, you know, it's like. At least as far as beer is concerned. Right. Like, I can really, truly appreciate what the Midwest is doing right now, and I, I have a lot of respect for it. So, cheers to you guys. Right on. Absolutely. Um, as you know, we're in the uh, Southern California area, in the Orange County area. One of our new sponsors is the OC Brouhaha, and uh, they've been kind enough to give us a sponsor code. So if you're going to the OC Brouhaha, um, or you're going to be in the Southern California area during that period of time, uh, go over to their website. Uh, it'll be in the show notes. Use the uh, offer code MBT20. You get 20% off your VIP tickets. Uh, you also help support the show because it shows them like, hey, people are watching. So help us out. Yep. And buy tickets to a great event. Yep. And uh, come awesome. and drink beer with us there. Yep. And, and uh, be fun. a portion of the money goes to the uh, Fallen, Fire, Fa Fallen Firefighters Fund, I believe it's called. Right. Um, so it's for a good cause. And there's uh, one of the local firehouses that, they're not sponsors, but they're pouring there. Right. I, I forgot the local number. It's like 36 something or 31. Something. Well, and, and what I'll say about the OC Brouhaha as a whole is that, like, the first time I was told about it, it was like, hey, you should go and here are some tickets or whatever. I was kind of like, oh, Orange County, Orange County Beer Festivals really just kind of suck as a whole. They've had a pretty bad rep for a long time, but. But OC know. Brouhaha, like, the first time I went, I was like, Oh my God! There's actual craft brewers here. Yeah, and there's a lot of them. And yeah. you know, I mean, there's still a couple of the the random whatevers, but and shop like, is there, right? But the majority <laughs> of it is like very good local Orange County craft brewers who are bringing out some of their their better beers. They have a great little. They used to have an island. I don't know what they're doing this year because they changed the venue. But um, they used to have an island for like bottle sharing, which mm. was awesome. Beer so it's a great event. Um, that's all I'm going to say about it. Go MBT twenty, one word. Uh, or one, yeah. right. one, right. one series of letters. One, Don't put a space one, anywhere. One acronym. Offer right. code. Uh, offer code MBT20. 20% off your this. VIP Sorry. tickets. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, anyway. Cheers to you guys. Well, cheers thanks, to the th two of you. Thanks for the beer, Steve. Thank you. Always. Cheers to Bells. Yeah. Cheers. And uh, until next week, cheers to you and stay safe and